what's been a day of unfounded rumors about violence in New York City, and a number of jittery store owners closed early, and some workers were sent home ahead of time. News 4's Mickey Hickey continues our reports from Times Square. Mickey? Sue, not just the store owners were jittery tonight. Some theater goers, tourists, and even hardened New Yorkers were feeling the tension in the air. Those heading to see Broadway shows like Man of La Mancha saw big wooden boards out front instead of those glitzy Broadway posters, and many others just decided to stay home. Ruben Levine usually takes in $40 a night playing on the street before curtain time on Broadway. Tonight, he got only $6. Tonight, no movement, quiet, very, everybody apprehensive, looking from both sides, and, the, and everybody in the theater is warning and cautioning me, Rube, be careful. All along the Great White Way, there was caution. Sales at the TKTS booth were off by 25%. The Sony monitor at the center of Times Square had stopped showing riot footage from L.A., and several of the theaters had boarded up their glass lobby windows just to be on the safe side. It's a ghost town. Nobody's in. Stores closed up early. Everybody went home early. This group of tourists tried to see the UN earlier this afternoon, only to find it closed. We would have visited, but it was possible. A business very slow. Why? I think because of that ride in California. A lot of people are scared. And uptown at trendy sidewalk restaurants, no one was eating or drinking outside tonight. By the middle of the afternoon, people were very scared, very uneasy with what was going to happen. And at the very end now, it seems that uh, things are getting better. There's no one on the streets. There's no spark to New York. Now, some theater goers leaving the Broadway shows just a few minutes ago told me they liked the half-empty houses, but not so for the theater owner and managers. They're hoping the fear will be gone tomorrow. The houses will be full here on Broadway to boost their economy and the rest of New York City's. Reporting live from Broadway, McGee Hickey, News 4. Back to you, Chuck and Sue. All right, McGee, I was looking around behind you there, and it doesn't look, look exactly like a ghost town, but it's not as crowded as usual this time of night, is it? That's correct. It is not a ghost town. That was what the police sergeant said. I didn't say it was a ghost town, but it's usually much more crowded. Have you been around town and uh, seen other areas? Yes, we were up on the east side and the west side and downtown, and it is a lot uh, more deserted than usual. People did stay indoors tonight. You saw no problems, McGee? No, no problems. Well, good for you. All right, thanks, McGee. Thank you, thank you. Well, because of all the rumors, New York City police have set up a special hotline to answer your questions if, you, if you'd like to call. And the hotline number is 212-374-5000. That's 212-374-5000. And it is important to repeat that most of rumors about trouble in New York City were just that, rumors. Well, News 4's Steve Handelsman is in Washington where he got a reaction to President Bush's address to the nation. Steve? So the president's point was to bring the country together, and Mr. Bush tried to do that by admitting that he's like many of us, surprised and shocked by the verdict in the Rodney King case and revolted by the riot that followed. It's not a message. The president flatly condemned the violence in Los Angeles and any notion that it's some kind of a civil rights protest. And let me assure you, I will use whatever force is necessary to restore order. What is going on in L.A. must and will stop. As your president, I guarantee you this violence will end. To make good on the promise, Bush tonight has ordered into L.A. the 4,000 Army and Marine troops he had merely mobilized this morning. And he federalized California National Guard troops in L.A. to create a unified command. That said, Bush turned to what he called justice and the police beating of Rodney King. What you saw and what I saw on the TV video was revolting. I felt anger. I felt pain. I thought... How can I explain this to my grandchildren? Bush didn't condemn the not guilty verdicts in the trial based on the tape, but almost. He paraphrased one of the black leaders who had come to see him this morning, that after taking 14 months to produce justice, the system seemed to fail. Viewed from outside the trial, it was hard to understand how the verdict could possibly square with the video. Those civil rights leaders with whom I met were stunned. And so was I, and so was Barbara, and so were my kids. But the verdict Wednesday was not the end of the process. Bush says he's confident that the federal grand jury, now considering civil rights charges against the four L.A. cops, will act as it should. Now, the president would not predict how he thought the grand jury might decide the four cases, but he did make some other predictions tonight. He said the violence will end 
justice will be served, and hope will return. So Chuck and Sue, those are the predictions of the president. He's got his fingers crossed now on all three. Back to you. Well, Steve, uh, what are the troops actually going to do in Los Angeles? This was just decided about 15 minutes before we saw the president on TV. He was in consultation here at the White House with the governor of California and with the mayor of Los Angeles. They've jointly decided there should be a big show of force out there tonight. Those troops will be out in the street. They'll have their weapons loaded. Their orders are to, be sh to shoot only if fired upon, and they hope that with such a massive show of force, that won't be necessary. All right, Steve Handelsman reporting live from Washington. Thank you. And uh, while we're on the subject, let's take a look. I think we have a helicopter shot of Los Angeles right now live for you. And we want to look at, uh, of course, you can't tell too much in the dark right now. But I must say, if you think about what we were looking at 24 hours ago, there were, there were shots, uh, especially toward dusk, that looked eerily like Kuwait when the oil well fires were burning. We're losing that picture, unfortunately. But you can see these columns of smoke last night rising into the sunset and a blanket, a cloak, a pall of smoke covering right over Los Angeles. Uh, tonight it is considerably better. The fires are still smoldering, some of them. But we don't have nearly the number of fires that were burning last night. There are 37 people, though, dead in the wake of this uh, rioting and looting and mayhem in Los Angeles and 1,200 more injured. But uh, indeed, things are looking a little better tonight than they did last night. And tonight, the people of Los Angeles are obviously are hoping the storm is going to pass and the peace will return over the weekend. Jim Hanchett reports on day three of the crisis in the City of Angels. Quiet streets and the presence of thousands of National Guard troops. It's enough evidence for city officials to say they now have regained partial control of the most troubled neighborhoods. 5,000 Army soldiers and federal law enforcement officers are standing by, waiting for a call to duty. Mayor Bradley says... His first priority is an area known as Koreatown. Shopkeepers say all of this damage happened because police ignored this neighborhood and ignored businesses built over a lifetime. City officials say this is Get Tough Day in Koreatown and elsewhere. That approach was evident early this morning, as for the first time, police began arresting looters. They promise many more arrests this evening on the second night of a dusk to dawn citywide curfew. I think we are gaining control of the situation. There certainly was a great deal of improvement last night over the night before. And I think with all of the resources that we're going to put into this issue today, uh, we expect to have further control of the matter. We're going to be here until we gain total control. I assure you of that. I'm Jim Hanchett, News 4, New York. And in just a few minutes, we're going to hear all of Rodney King's statement urging an end to the mayhem in Los Angeles. And we're going to get more live coverage from Los Angeles. Uh, we will also show you the frustration that Los Angeles has. We'll have Mayor Dinkins live to discuss tonight's trouble here in New York. Other cities see violence. Also, we will check out where and how much 